All right, man, Torture Talk, 8 a.m. show. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. All right, man. Good morning, everybody. How y'all doing out there? Hope I hope y'all had a great night last night. I had a great night. I hope everything is good with you. You know what I'm saying? I hope everybody woke up and uh, feeling good. Ain't got no cold like me. I had a cold, you know, coughing a little bit, but I'm all right now. So look. All right. So today we're going to be talking about what Skepta said to Ebro um, about the state of hip hop and why and Drake and Kendrick and what happened and what's good and what's bad and all that good stuff. So before I get into that, you know, I got to get my spill, the legendary spill. Somebody said I had a legendary spill. Good morning. Good morning. This is Torture Talk. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. If you're new here, let me work for your subscription today. All the beautiful, sexy ladies put one in the chat. All the fellas, y'all know where to find the ones that just don't harass them. I don't sell no merch, but I do have content absolutely free. But if you want to leave a donation, links is on the screen right here. Cash app, PayPal's in the description. Thank y'all for all your donations, too. They called me the Hidden Gym. I went from 1,300 subscribers to over 12,000. Yeah, man. And uh, a million by Monday morning, all that good stuff. And uh, let me know where you're from, too. I really appreciate it, man. They called me the King of the North, too. I actually call myself the King of the North. You know what it is. So look, man, look. We're going to get into this clip, man. And uh, we be back to discuss. You know how it goes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so this comes courtesy of Marcus at Work Media. <laughs> you know what it is, man. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Marcus at Work Media. So I want to pull up this clip here and respond to because it's an interview with Apple Music with Ebro and Skepta. They kind of touched on a lot of different other things, but the only thing I'm concerned with is their thoughts on the battle and the impact of the battle. So they kind of went on in order to feel like how things went crazy with the battle. There was a lot of lying with the battle. And then if that was good for hip hop or not. Like since I was clashing, when... I so for all those Skepta, I believe he's from the UK. Um... Legendary artist, UK um, artist. Uh, yeah, so for all those that don't know, and look him up. He's all right. He's all right. He's pretty pretty decent. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, so let's see what he had to say. Run that back a little bit. Let's see what he had to say. How things went crazy with the battle. There was a lot of lying with the battle. And then if that was good for hip hop or not. Like since I was clashing, when stuff gets said like that now, today, it's more personal. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something about... There was a lot of lying on there. There was a lot of lying. They, people were just saying... There was one... All right, so I'm going to stop it right there. See? <sighs> there's a lot of lying in hip-hop. There's a lot of lying in rap music. Rappers lie all the time. They lie all the time. Ebro and Skepta... There's a lot of lying all the time. It does happen. I mean, do I have to make an announcement about it? I don't understand why everybody's saying this. Rappers been lying for years. Why do y'all try to act like it's something new? Rappers been lying for years. Saying that they have all these cars, all these clothes, all these hoes, but don't have none of it. Or they'll have it in a video, but don't own none of it. Saying they shooting people's mothers, saying that they've been lying. Why is this such a big deal? You got to call everybody out if you're going to call these two out for it. Everybody has to get called out for it because rappers lie. It's called sensationalism and more. Over exaggerating, you know. So let's keep it going. Shit, they one were just saying shit. There was one K this track that came out and I was like, oh, this is this is over. Like, this isn't about, this isn't rap, this isn't a rap, this ain't clashing anymore. No, no, they don't like each other. This, this is really, this is over. Like, yeah. they don't like each other. It's yeah. clear, I can hear it. Like, yeah, I can yeah, hear yeah. it in his voice. He doesn't like, uh, do you know what I think it is? Huh. I don't, what I don't understand is why rap, why do, why do people act as if, and, and, and I know they're not saying this, but I kind of get the hint that this is what they're really saying under their breath. Why do people act like, like like Drake has to have friends? 
Like people has to be, they have to be nice to Drake. Why do people feel like that? It's like, oh, he's saying, oh, they never, yeah, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, this, this is personal. Like saying it on, from Kendrick's point of view, but not saying it from Drake's point of view. The stuff that Drake said was egregious. So it's one thing, one thing Kendrick said, and one thing Kendrick did. I gotta say because y'all give Drake a pass, even if you're not a Drake fan, right? Even if you're just a Drake listening, for some reason. He gets the grace over everybody else, over Kendrick especially. It's like y'all kind of give Drake the grace because I believe that y'all know that Kendrick is a much better rapper and a much better artist than him. And I think y'all do that with a lot of people who are the better or superior artists. Y'all always give the grace to the other guy. You always go, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, nah, the stuff that Kendrick said, it was skate. Ooh, I was like, they don't really like each other. What you mean? Keep it going. Because because they are in positions where they are they they are both the biggest. They are both really big, yeah. Have major deals, major cahoots with major companies, right? Talking to each other like this is looking crazy. Like mm, you're, that's a good point. You're. I mean. I mean. This is a part of this is a part of the battle. And I understand what he's saying. He's saying that these these major organizations, they see these two artists talking like this to each other. I'm going to tell you one thing that a lot of the major organizations and a lot of these big companies look at and they really don't care. A lot of times they look at hip hop and rap as entertainment. Even if it's being said, certain things are being said, even with, even with, because we understand it, right? We understand how bars go and everything goes. We know, we know that, right? But a lot of these um, mogul execs and these people at the top, they don't really understand hidden meaning in bars and songs. It goes over their head because it's, it's so masterfully done. Like, not like us, Right. Certain parts are not like us. I don't think that they're going to catch on now. Now, um, Certified Love Voice, Certified PDF, yeah, they might catch on to that. But the A minor, you know, I'm trying to strike a chord, and it's probably A minor. Like, that could be taken as, as basically playing the piano, striking a chord. You know what I'm saying? But I know y'all, I know y'all not stupid. I'm just saying that this is what they, what they, they probably thinking. They're not thinking. And on top of that, a lot of record execs, not even record execs, a lot of uh, business top, business mogul, white collar guys, they don't listen to rap for the words. They listen to rap for the groove or how, or how, or how it makes them feel. You know what I'm saying? They don't really listen to the words like that. And again, I'm not, I'm not um, neglecting what he's saying. I'm just saying a lot of times that does happen. You know what I'm saying? They don't really care for the words. They just care for the... the how how big the record is with major companies right talking to each other like this is looking crazy like mm, you're, that's a good point you're you're saying you're calling him a word but he bro this guy's signed to thing so now how can they sign a man that is that is being accused of this thing so now the things that when I was clashing in grime, we never had nothing to lose. There you go. This is where I'm landing now. So, so, right, so when right, we're right, saying right, like things to each other, you could call me anything in the world. I'm not going to lose a Nike deal. Right. I'm not going to not be able to put food in my. That probably even get me more money because we'll go to the show and do the clash on the stage, and more people are paying and rare. And this is kind of like, I know he's probably not. I know. I know. I know that it's not his intentions. But this is kind of a slight to Kendrick. Because and I know and, and and I know he's not saying Kendrick's name and I know that he's not coming at Kendrick. But for me, I'm looking at how his how he's wording everything and it's kind of like more on the side of Drake. Because he's saying he's saying uh, this person could lose this deal when you're calling this person this word. Well, who called who the word? Because Drake ain't really called Kendrick a word. Maybe he called him a, a, a an abuser, but that, you know, the way he, the way Drake did it, 
it kind of made it seem like kind, people are kind of making it seem like it's not that big of a deal how Drake came in him and what Drake said about him. Because believe it or not, it's two things that I think, well, three things that I think hurts people, especially here in America. One is one is being a PDF uh, filer, you know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, two would be a uh, a uh, 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 an assaulter or somebody that 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 abuses the opposite gender. You know what I'm saying? Hitting on people and all that stuff. And um, three would be a uh, a uh, how would I say a substance abuser. You know what I'm saying? To the point where you can't even control it, like, kind of like a crackhead. You know what I'm saying? So I think that what he's saying, it may be, in, in some cases it's true, but it's more siding with Drake. Like, well, if he's saying these things about this guy and that guy might not be able to get signed to this deal and, and get that deal because they're signed, because the word, because he ain't saying it, but that's what he's implying by saying this. You know what I'm saying? But let's keep it going. You know what I'm saying? So the it's version they was doing was hurting. Us. It's hurting what we've it's hurting what we've built. Okay, so I mean, I kind of understand where he's coming from with coming up. If you're beefing with people, you don't really got much to lose, right? You ain't got nothing. You coming from the inner city, the hood, normally, and, you know, you're fighting for everything you got, and any notoriety helps you get more awareness to help you get more paid, more shows, more gigs, so on and so forth. And another thing, too, that I think a lot of these people are not, uh, they're not taking into consideration. And this is what makes me mad, not mad, but this is this is kind of annoys me when I look at these uh, these interviews with these rappers talking about the beef. They don't want to acknowledge that Kendrick Lamar warned Drake. And I think that's kind of like the reason why they don't want to do that, because they don't want to make it seem like Kendrick was in control the whole time. But they don't want to acknowledge that Kendrick Lamar warned Drake several times not to take it down this road. He literally did that. So whenever they talk about, oh, they went past the, they went past this and all of this, I don't want to hear it. Because you have to also say, well, he did warn Drake. But y'all looking at the end of the story. Y'all not looking at the climax and you're not looking at how the story became what it became. Y'all just looking at that total, just the end of the story. You know what I'm saying? How did they get there? That's my thing. And it's Drake's fault that this all happened. I don't care what anybody says. He told Drake not to go down this road. And, and Drake confirmed it by saying uh, in, on the end of one of the songs, um, I think it was um, um, uh, Family Matters, he confirmed that him and Kendrick talked. And Kendrick confirmed that they talked. But yet and still, what are we doing? We're sitting here acting as if like, well, Kendrick said the thing that can ruin someone's career forever. Well, guess what? He was warned not to go down that road, and this is what happens. That's what y'all gotta. That's what y'all gotta say. And then, then it's like, oh, well, he took it too far. He didn't take it too far. He ain't take it too far. That's what I'm saying. I don't think he took it too far. I think he ain't take it far enough. I think he should. I think he should have kept going until he beat him into oblivion. I don't think he should have stopped. I don't think he should have stopped. And I don't, think, I don't think that Drake should have stopped either. I think Drake should have kept going. Drake gave up. He went into that last round, and he swung the last... It got up. He swung the last punch and tapped Kendrick on his shoulder. And Kendrick knocked him out again. That's what happened. But since both of them are so big in their respective fields in areas in music with all kinds of large scale endorsements from large companies, then he's saying it feels like they're risking a lot of their monetary opportunities by fighting with each other and making themselves look crazy to the corporations at the same time. Okay. Now, I, 
I, I think he, I, I understand what Marcus is saying. I think he is saying that. I think it's a little, I think it's a little more deeper than just uh, monetary, but I understand exactly what Marcus is saying by that. That he, the way he explained that, that was pretty good. So I get where he's coming from, but when it comes to hip hop and large corporations that sponsors them, they know what they're getting into. A lot of these men. Nah, I disagree with that. I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree with that. I don't, I, a lot of times, and I, and this is the thing about, uh, y'all can't say that these people know what they're getting themselves into and then say that uh, uh, these, and let's just be clear, who runs the corporations, mostly white, uh, white, white guys. These white guys can't say that this rap music is, uh, uh, violent music, and then you say no, that's a stereotype. You can't say that. You can't say they know that they, what they self getting themselves into, and at the same time say that these people, uh, <laughs> the same time say that these people are stereotyping black music or or hip hop music by saying that this is gonna happen. You know what I'm saying? Battling been going on forever. Now I don't know if you're saying in, in the scope of that. They know what they self. They know what them getting themselves. They know what they're getting themselves into through the scope of that. But outside of that, these corporations don't owe rappers nothing. They 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 don't need rappers. I'm gonna be honest with y'all. Y'all might think that corporations need rappers. They don't. They don't. They'll exist without rappers. Y'all think Nike needs Drake? You don't. They don't. I'll go as far as saying. A lot of these corporations don't need any anything because as long as they got a good marketing plan, nine times out of ten, they're going to work. They're going to work. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm not saying that, that, that people like Drake doesn't help their sales. It does. But Nike is much bigger than Drake. A hundred times over bigger than Drake. Nike does not need Drake. You know what I'm saying? They don't. He's, he is, he is a, a product of their uh of their community. You know what I'm saying? He's a product that they sell inside of their community. But that's what it is. But I don't think that these corporations know what they're getting themselves into um a lot of times because some of them go into this with people they pitch a good idea to some of these corporations and a lot of these corporations don't know. And this is why these corporations drop people. This is why they, this is why they, 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 they move past a deal. They, they, they cancel the contract with the people. That's why they don't know. A lot of them don't know what they're getting themselves into. That's not true. Not at all. If they did, y'all would say they're stereotyping or if they did, they would not, they would not deal with a lot of these people. If you think a corporation, if a corporation knew that, uh, let's just say, if a corporation knew with, with um, and we ain't talking about behind closed doors, we're talking about uh, uh, things that can be seen, that's in the public eye, not behind closed doors. Do you think that a lot of these corporations would have still been siding with, with the diddler if uh, they knew what he was doing? No, they wouldn't have. They would have been dropped them. That's how it goes. Public public shame is what it is. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of companies don't want to be a part of that. They don't. And it kind of goes again. It kind of like contradicts what he said the first time. He's saying, I get it, what he's saying. But the corporations don't. They don't. They don't know. Some of them don't know what they're getting. Into. Most of them don't know. When it comes to hip hop and large corporations that sponsors them, they know what they're getting into. A lot of these major corporations that back these artists, whether it's hip hop, rap, rock, whatever it is, because a lot of crazy stuff has been said, goes on in rock music too. So these corporations know what they're getting into. They have tons of clauses in those contracts that they can get out of any time if anything get crazy, if a lot of backlash. Now, okay, if you explain it like that, yeah, that's true. That's true. But for the most part, 
um, they don't go into these contracts believing that these people are going to do certain things. Now, that con and again, I like how you try to, like, you kind of double talk there because you basically, you basically defended your argument very well, but you also contradicted your argument by saying it, that uh, they know what themselves getting into. They know what they're getting into because, because they put a lot of clauses in the contract. So you're basically saying they going into a deal knowing that this guy could crash out at any time, but they're still going to make the deal, do the deal with him. I don't think a lot of companies operate like that. I don't think a lot of companies operate in a, in a deal of, of uh, we think that you're going to do something. Like, let's just use Kendrick Lamar, for example. They didn't know these companies that have working for him or whatever or he's working for, they didn't know that Kendrick Lamar was going to uh, do that to Drake. They didn't know that. I don't, that's what I'm saying. I don't think that, I don't think that, uh, that, that companies do stuff like that. I don't think that they do stuff like that. Don't get me wrong. We may be some out there, but the good, the good one, the big, the big, big companies, I think that they have like across the board contracts and saying certain things. If you say this or you do that, obviously they have that, but I don't think they're going into it with the intention that, yeah, I know what I'm getting myself into. This guy's going to crash out eventually. No, I don't, I don't think they do that. That's just my opinion. I don't think they do that. I think they go into it thinking that you go, we're going to make money. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think. That's just coming from one artist. Like, when all that stuff was going down with Diddy, they dropped him right away. He had to pull out from Revolt. Like, they pull out right away. They got clauses in there that allow them to do that. So I don't really buy that it's it's hurting their business, although some could drop them, but that's the nature of the game. These corporations know what it is. That's business. Business is just like the streets. They can put their... Uh, uh... There's so many things I could say about that point. I mean, if we talk about numbers and how things go, yeah, but business is not like the streets. It's not. I totally disagree with that. Business is not like the streets. You talk a white collar crime, yeah, but we're talking uh, uh, public trading or businesses that people, um, organizations that people run. No, it's not like the streets. The streets is, and, and I know this is probably going to sound kind of uh, anecdotal, but the streets is, is, is unorganized. It's unorganized. And I, and I ain't saying all companies are organized, but I can't compare the streets to business. If we talk about making money, yeah, but outside of that, just the motto is totally different. You know what I'm saying? The motto is totally different. I know some people say, well, in businesses, cut, there's a cutthroat business. People do stuff like that, just like the streets, but... I mean, in that case, you could say, yeah, you got a point there. But for me, if I'm running a business, let's say I'm running a, I don't know, a lawn mowing business. I, I know, coincidental that it's cutting grass. But I'm I'm uh, running a lawn mowing business. It's not a cutthroat business. I'm not trying to cut people out. Like, no, if you get fired or you get hired, that's it. I ain't, oh, oh uh, maybe I need to do some scandalous stuff to get to the, the head of the weed whacker department. Like, no, I'm not doing that. So I don't think that that's the case. And even with these big corporations, I don't think that that's the case either. You know what I'm saying? In some cases, they kind of line up similarly, but in most cases, no, I, I disagree with that. But that's not what this is about. <laughs> I love talking, though. I'm sorry. Keep it going money behind a large product that goes nowhere and flops and they take a L. Write it off, keep pushing, get some investment capital money, do it again. They understand the risks involved, but they also understand the potential gain from it working. So I don't think that's a good reason. Now, as far as it's making it look bad for the culture, that may be another thing, right? Yeah, it's part of the culture. Yeah. Um, I thought it was exciting and, and it was needed for hip hop. We needed a reset, you know. We needed this type of energy. Uh, we needed to see two of the most elite MCs go at it, you know, in an artistic way. Like we like to keep it in the art, of course. Um, I thought it was healthy for the culture. Um, and people see it, needed to just see the difference, you know, that you needed to see the art of battle. You need to learn to appreciate lyricism and, and artistry. Um, you know, I didn't 
it got personal. Yeah. You, I hate to see it get that personal, but it's battle. It's the art of war. That boy warned him three times. Do you want to take it here? And he wanted to take it there. So I. That, that's the first time I heard somebody say, shout out to Rhapsody, man. That's the first time that I heard somebody say that. The first time. That first time I heard somebody say that right there. He warned him. So y'all could just stop all that, but. I can't blame the culture for that door opening. Um, you know, I've heard some people that feel differently. You know, they're like, I don't, I hate to see that, but I, I think it's healthy. You know, sometimes it, 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 it's a mirror for you. Hip hop has come a long way. Mainstream, in suburban communities, they all rock with hip hop with our message being dead from the hood and streets and the grimy stuff. They take all of that as face value entertainment in hip hop and the white suburban kids in the middle of the million dollar houses. They all rapping that like it's nothing, right? So I get how the culture could be impacted, but I don't think that's a reason not to do the battle, in my opinion. Yeah, make sure y'all go follow Marcus at Work Media. Uh, great channel. Yeah, he has some great points in that in that video. Um, now, as far as the last point goes, do I think that this actually hurt hip hop? I always said that this battle definitely took the life out of hip hop, but now it's time for artists to step up, and they have been. It's some artist that's been stepping up and taking, you know, taking, trying to bring the life back into it because that battle basically made everybody just want to listen to them too because they took the air out of the room. They did. I ain't going to lie about it. But with Chromacopia coming out, came out, and, and uh, a Soul Burger, and a lot of these other albums that came out after the battle, yeah, it's 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 looking like you know they're trying to bring it back, but I'm gonna tell y'all now, hip hop is not in a good space, and it needs to be brought back. I don't know if Kendrick's gonna do it. I don't know who's gonna do it, but it needs to be brought back because right now it's not looking good. It's not looking good, but. We got some got some promises coming up. You know what I'm saying? Some hope coming up. So either way, man, y'all know what it is, man. Y'all have yourself a good afternoon, a good morning, and I'm going to see y'all in the afternoon. Love y'all. Bye. -bye.